All right, let's dive into paragraph organization. Now, when we talk about organizing paragraphs, we're essentially talking about how we arrange our ideas in writing. Organizing a paragraph effectively is what makes the content clear and easy to follow for your reader. There are several different patterns of organization, and each one serves a specific purpose, depending on what you're trying to achieve. First up, listing. This pattern is useful when you need to provide a series of points or examples. Think of it like a list that's part of a paragraph. Each sentence adds another item or idea to the list. For instance, if you're talking about Judy's favorite restaurants, you'd mention each one with some detail, like, first, she loves Italian food. Another favorite is sushi. Notice how each sentence builds on the last, giving the reader more information in a clear, step-by-step -step manner. Words like first, next, and finally are great signposts for the reader to keep track of where you are in the list. This sample paragraph follows a listing pattern of organization, where multiple points are presented in a clear and orderly sequence. The topic sentence introduces the main idea, Judy's love for restaurants. After that, the paragraph lists three specific types of restaurants she enjoys, in order. 1. First, the paragraph mentions her love for fine dining, providing examples of the types of cuisine she enjoys, Italian, French, and Japanese. 2. Next, it adds another category, casual spots, like burger joints or cafes, further expanding on her preferences. 3. Finally, it wraps up with her excitement for trying new restaurants, bringing variety to her experiences. Each type of restaurant is listed step by step, making it easy for the reader to follow the structure and understand Judy's diverse tastes in dining. This type of organization allows for a clear and organized presentation of information. Next, we have sequence or time order. This method is all about presenting events in the order that they happened. You'll use it when writing narratives or explaining processes. Let's say you're describing Alan checking his bike before a ride. You would start with what he did first, maybe checking the tires, then move on to cleaning the chain and end with him examining the brakes. This pattern is essential for making sure your reader can follow a chronological flow without getting confused about what happened when. Transition words like first, then, and finally are key here to guide the reader through the sequence. This paragraph illustrates the time sequence or chronological order, patterned by describing a series of actions Alan takes in preparation for his bike ride, with each step occurring in a specific order. Topic sentence. The paragraph begins by setting the scene. Alan is checking his bike before a long ride. This gives the reader context for the upcoming sequence of events. Sequential actions. The body of the paragraph follows a clear time sequence. First, Alan inspects the tires to ensure they are properly inflated. Afterward, he cleans the chain to remove dust or debris. Next, he tests the brakes to make sure they are functioning smoothly. Finally, he adjusts the seat height for comfort. Time markers, words like first, afterward, next, and finally, signal the progression of time and guide the reader through each step Alan takes keeping the sequence clear and logical. Conclusion, by the end of the sequence, everything is in order for Alan's trip, signaling the completion of the process. This time sequence paragraph is effective in showing the chronological steps Alan follows, making it easy for the reader to follow along as each task builds upon the previous one. Now on to comparison and contrast. This is exactly what it sounds like. You're either comparing two things, showing their similarities, or contrasting them, highlighting their differences. For example, if you're writing about tomatoes, you might compare homegrown tomatoes to store-bought ones. Homegrown tomatoes may be fresher and tastier because they're picked at peak ripeness, while store-bought tomatoes, picked early for transport, might not have the same flavor. This pattern works well when you want to explore the pros and cons of two ideas, products or situations. This paragraph illustrates the comparison slash contrast pattern by examining both similarities and differences between supermarket tomatoes and homegrown tomatoes. The topic sentence sets up the comparison by stating that while both types of tomatoes are common in households, there are key differences between them. Comparison, similarities, both supermarket and homegrown tomatoes are rich in nutrients and can be used in a variety of dishes. 
This establishes a shared characteristic between the two, highlighting their versatility and nutritional value. Contrast Differences The paragraph contrasts the two types by discussing how supermarket tomatoes are typically picked before ripening, leading to a less flavorful taste. In contrast, homegrown tomatoes are harvested at peak ripeness, offering a sweeter and more robust flavor. Concluding sentence The paragraph wraps up by noting that although both types of tomatoes serve the same purpose in recipes, many people prefer the freshness of homegrown tomatoes, emphasizing the superiority of their flavor. This structure effectively compares the shared traits of both types of tomatoes while contrasting their key differences, focusing on taste and freshness, which influence people's preferences. Cause and effect is a little different. Here you're explaining why something happens, the cause, and what results from it, the effect. Let's take the example of pollution in Boston. You would explain that the cause, industrial waste and traffic congestion, leads to the effect. Boston's status as one of the dirtiest cities in the U.S. cause and effect structure is really useful for explaining relationships between events or phenomena, showing how one thing leads to another. This paragraph illustrates the cause and effect pattern by explaining the reasons behind Boston's reputation as the dirtiest city in the U.S. and the resulting effects. Topic Sentence The paragraph begins by introducing the main idea. Boston is known for its historic beauty but has earned a reputation as the dirtiest city in the U.S. This sets up the focus on the causes of this reputation and its effects. Causes The paragraph identifies two primary causes of Boston's pollution. Industrial waste Factories and industries near the waterfront dump pollutants into the air and water, leading to environmental damage. Traffic congestion. The overwhelming traffic that clogs Boston streets contributes significantly to air pollution. Effects. These causes lead to several negative outcomes. The pollutants from factories and traffic contribute to Boston's environmental problems. The air pollution caused by traffic affects the city's cleanliness and public health. Conclusion. The paragraph wraps up by reiterating the effect. Despite Boston's historic beauty, the pollution from industrial waste and traffic makes it hard for the city to maintain its cleanliness. This cause and effect paragraph clearly connects the reasons, industrial waste and traffic congestion, to the outcome, Boston's struggle with pollution, showing how specific factors directly impact the city's reputation. Extended definition is another useful organizational method, especially when you need to explain a term or concept in depth. It's more than just a dictionary definition, you'll expand on the term and explore its meaning in a broader context. Take the Underground Railroad, for instance. You wouldn't just say, it was a system of escape routes for slaves. Instead, you'd go on to describe how it operated, who was involved, and why it was so significant. The extended definition allows you to provide context and deeper understanding for your reader. This paragraph is an example of an extended definition, where the term Underground Railroad is explained in depth by breaking it down into its key components and clarifying any misconceptions. Topic Sentence The paragraph opens by defining the Underground Railroad as a secret network used by enslaved African Americans to escape to freedom. This introduces the term and its basic meaning. Clarification of Misconceptions Right after introducing the term, the paragraph addresses a common misunderstanding. It explains that the Underground Railroad was neither underground nor an actual railroad. Instead, it was a metaphor for a series of pathways and individuals working in secret to help people escape from slavery. This clarification deepens the reader's understanding of the term. Supporting details the paragraph then provides further explanation of the network's workings. It consisted of abolitionists who offered essential resources like food, shelter, and guidance to fleeing slaves. The name Underground Railroad captures the hidden and illegal nature of the operation, highlighting the risks involved for both those escaping and those helping them. Concluding sentence. The paragraph ends by reinforcing the impact and significance of the Underground Railroad, emphasizing that through this network, many people were able to achieve freedom and safety. This extended definition goes beyond a simple explanation of what the Underground Railroad was. It breaks down key details, addresses misunderstandings, and highlights its importance, giving a fuller, richer understanding of the term. Problem solution is a common organizational pattern especially in persuasive writing. Here, you first outline a problem and then propose a solution. 
For example, you might discuss the issue of classes being canceled due to bad weather, which causes students to fall behind. Then you'd introduce online learning as a potential solution to keep the students on track. This approach works well when you're trying to convince the reader to adopt a new idea or strategy. This paragraph illustrates the problem-solution pattern of organization by presenting a challenge, canceled classes due to weather, and proposing a solution, online learning platforms. Topic sentence. The paragraph introduces the overall problem. Canceling classes due to weather conditions. This sets up the discussion of specific issues and potential solutions. Problems. The paragraph identifies two key issues that arise from weather-related cancellations. Students falling behind. When classes are canceled, students are unable to stay on track with their studies, which forces them to rush through the curriculum when they return. Teachers struggle. Teachers are faced with the challenge of covering all necessary material in a shorter time frame, which can affect the quality of instruction. Solution. To address these issues, the paragraph offers a clear solution. Online learning platforms. By using virtual lessons during canceled class days, students can continue their learning remotely avoiding the disruption to their education. This keeps them engaged and on track with the curriculum. Effect of the solution. The paragraph concludes by emphasizing the positive outcome of the solution. With online learning, the academic year can proceed smoothly, even if there are weather interruptions, helping both students and teachers manage the workload. This problem-solution paragraph effectively identifies the issue, lost class time, and presents a practical, modern solution online learning showing how it can alleviate the challenges for both students and teachers. Spatial organization is all about describing where things are in relation to each other. It's most often used in descriptive writing. Imagine you're describing a room. You'd guide the reader through the space by pointing out where each object is located. For example, to the left is the sofa, across from the TV, and under the window is the bookshelf. It gives the reader a mental map of the setting. This paragraph demonstrates spatial organization, where the description of the living room is organized based on the physical layout of objects in relation to one another. This technique guides the reader through the space step by step, creating a vivid mental picture. Topic sentence. The paragraph begins by stating that the living room is small, but arranged to maximize space. This introduces the focus on the room's layout. Spatial description. The description starts with what you see as you enter the room placing the reader physically in the space. It immediately mentions the left wall, describing the brown leather sofa positioned across from the TV, giving a clear sense of where things are located. Moving through the room, the paragraph then points out the far wall with a large window, followed by a small bookshelf underneath it. Central object, the paragraph shifts to the middle of the room, describing the soft gray rug and wooden coffee table. This emphasizes how the central elements are arranged to tie the room together visually. Final effect. The setup concludes with a description of the atmosphere, noting how the layout and elements combine to create a cozy and inviting environment. By organizing the description based on the room's physical layout, the reader is guided through the space in a natural, logical way, enhancing their understanding of how the room looks and feels. This spatial organization helps create a clear and vivid mental image of the living room. Next is description. This is where you paint a picture with words. You're using vivid details to help the reader imagine the scene. Think of it as taking them on a visual journey, using adjectives and specific nouns to bring the scene to life. For example, describing a hike up flat-top mountain could involve the colors, shapes, and sounds of the landscape. Words like rolling hills, Majestic and vibrant Luke give readers sensory experiences that help them visualize what you're describing. This paragraph is an example of descriptive writing, where the goal is to create a vivid image of the scene for the reader using sensory details and specific observations. The paragraph guides the reader through the visual and sensory experience of hiking up Flat Top Mountain. Topic Sentence It begins by stating the reward of hiking up Flat Top Mountain stunning views of the surrounding landscape. This sets the stage for the detailed description that follows. Visual imagery. The description starts by directing the reader's gaze to the left, where the rolling hills of the West Virginian mountains form a vast green landscape. This paints a broad scenic view that captures the expanse of nature. 
The distant Blue Ridge Mountain is mentioned next with its tall majestic peaks towering over the others, adding depth to the image. This contrast between the nearby rolling hills and the far-off mountains creates a sense of scale and grandeur. Sensory details. Beyond visuals, the description appeals to other senses. The crisp air suggests a refreshing, invigorating atmosphere, and the scent of pine enhances the reader's connection to the natural surroundings through smell. The sky's vibrant blue and the few white clouds add to the scene's beauty and tranquility, giving a peaceful tone to the environment. Final effect. The paragraph concludes with an emotional impact by noting that nature's beauty is on full display, making the effort of the climb worth every step. This reinforces the sense of awe and satisfaction one feels after reaching the top. By using detailed visual and sensory descriptions, the paragraph immerses the reader in the experience, allowing them to imagine the scenery and the sensations of being at the summit of Flat Top Mountain. The descriptive organization enhances the reader's emotional connection to the scene. Argument, also known as opinion or persuasive writing, is all about convincing the reader to agree with your point of view. This structure works well when you're making a case for something. For instance, you might argue that students should be allowed to arrive late to class due to transportation issues or personal responsibilities. To be persuasive, you'd offer logical reasons and back them up with examples or evidence to support your position. This paragraph illustrates the options or pro-con style of organization, where multiple perspectives or options are presented to support an argument. In this case, the writer is advocating for a flexible lateness policy for students under certain conditions, offering specific reasons to support their view. Topic sentence. The paragraph begins with a clear claim. While teachers emphasize punctuality, the writer believes there are circumstances where lateness should be permitted. This sets the stage for offering options or explanations that support this stance. First option, transportation challenges. The writer first highlights transportation issues, focusing on students who may have long commutes or face unreliable public transportation. This option provides a real-life challenge that can interfere with punctuality, giving a practical reason for flexibility. The example of public transportation being unreliable strengthens this point, illustrating how external factors beyond a student's control can lead to tardiness. Second option, balancing responsibilities. The paragraph then introduces a second option, focusing on students who juggle part-time jobs or family obligations. This is a more personal and situational reason for lateness, reflecting the difficulty of balancing multiple responsibilities with school schedules. Third option, reducing stress. The final point suggests that occasional leniency with lateness can reduce stress and improve student well-being. This expands the argument by addressing the potential benefits for student mental health, which is an increasingly important consideration in education. Concluding statement, the paragraph ends by reinforcing the overall idea that under reasonable conditions, teachers should be more flexible with lateness. This restates the claim while emphasizing the importance of understanding and empathy in these situations. By offering a range of justifications, transportation issues, personal responsibilities, and the need for stress reduction. The paragraph organizes these options to build a case for a more lenient lateness policy. Each point is clearly articulated, with examples and reasoning that support the argument. Finally, we have classification. This is where you break down a subject into categories or groups. Say you're classifying students into types. The diligent, the intelligent, and the semi-motivated. You describe the traits of each category, showing how they differ from one another. This method is helpful when you're trying to explain the variety or range within a topic. This paragraph is a great example of classification, where the writer organizes students into distinct categories based on their approach to academics. Let's break down how this classification is structured. Topic sentence. The paragraph begins with a clear classification statement. Students can be grouped into three main categories, diligent, intelligent, and semi-motivated. This sets up the structure for the paragraph, signaling that it will define and explain each category. First category, diligent students. The paragraph first describes diligent students, those who work hard, always complete their assignments on time, 
and actively participate in class. These students are characterized by their consistent effort and commitment to their studies. This description emphasizes their hard work and reliability, illustrating what sets them apart from other types of students. Second category, intelligent students. Next, the writer introduces intelligent students, contrasting them with diligent students. While these students may not put in as much effort, their natural ability allows them to perform well academically. This highlights a different approach to success in school, one that relies on intellect rather than hard work, illustrating that academic achievement can come from multiple strengths. Third category, semi-motivated students. Finally, the paragraph describes semi-motivated students, a blend of the first two categories. These students fluctuate between being diligent and intelligent. They have the potential to excel but often lack the consistency or drive. This category reflects a more complex student type, acknowledging that some students' performance may depend on various factors like motivation or external circumstances. Concluding statement. The paragraph ends by summarizing that these three types of students represent different approaches to studying and academic success. This conclusion ties the categories together, showing that while students may approach their work in different ways, these classifications help understand the diversity in effort and ability. In this classification paragraph, each student type is clearly defined and distinguished, making it easy to understand the differences between them. By organizing the students into these three groups, the writer provides a logical and structured explanation of how students approach their education. As you can see, each of these organizational patterns serves a different purpose and helps you achieve clarity in your writing. By choosing the right structure for your paragraph, you guide your reader through your ideas in a logical, coherent way.